Relationship between short and long run cost curves. If the long run the relative price of the factors is assumed constant alongside three different cost levels, the equilibrium will take place at those points where the budget constraints are tangent to the Isaac ones. Obtaining thus the path of expansion of the long run production. We will transfer this information to the adjoining plane to derive the total cost in the long run. If we at this point consider the constant fixed capital factor, we would now be conducting a short run analysis. To get Q1, we need a budget constraint located more to the right, higher cost level. To obtain Q2, we would need the same cost level as in the long run, whereas to achieve the Q3, production level we need a higher total cost than in the long run. In this way we can see how the total cost only coincides at one level of production in the short and long run. As for the other production levels, the total cost in the short run will always be higher than that which would take place in the long run. Using the knowledge that we have acquired so far, let us draw different short run total cost curves on a long run total cost curve. Since the value of the radio vector slope determines the average cost, we can determine the minimum long run average cost as follows, which corresponds to the optimum plant size. At those points where the short and long run total cost curves come into contact, they will indicate the same average cost. Consequently, given the conventional U-shaped form of the short-run average total cost curves, all those located to the left of the long-run average cost curve will make contact with the decreasing side of the trajectory, and those located to the right in the increasing section. Only one of them will coincide in its minimum with the long-run average cost curve. If, on the other hand, we consider the short and long run modular cost curves that, as we saw in a previous demonstration, must intersect the average functions at their minimums, we shall obtain the relationship between short and long run costs, and we can verify how the long run average cost curve can be defined as the envelope of the different short run average total cost curves.